The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. The events at Black Tor. When young policeman Jamie is posted to a small village in the Yorkshire Moors, he and his wife Pam are anticipating a nice, quiet life. But the arrival of a curious letter sparks a terrifying chain of events. Aided by F.R. Probert, a Dominican friar, the duo come face to face with the forces of darkness, as they investigate a sinister cult of murderous devil worshippers. Now for an episode of the thriller The Events at Black Tor. The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. The Events at Black Tor, Episode 5, The Things That Emerge With The Dark, In Which The Trap Is Sprung, And Jamie Receives A Shock. To a child. It's a trick. Of course it's a trick to get us outside. But it's a good one, isn't it? The best. It's perfect. We've no choice. We've just got to go. We can't leave him out there. We're not amongst those... those fiends. Aren't there any limits? Oh, Lord, is there nothing they won't do? He must be nearly out of his mind. Out there like that in the dark. What are you doing? Jamie, don't go out. Maybe they'll bargain. You out there! Listen! You can't bargain with evil. We've got to do something, Father. Listen! Can you hear me? Don't harm the child. Tell us what you want, but don't harm the child. Can you hear me? Don't harm the child! It's useless. Bastards. Let's have this window shut. What's out there, Father, that they can behave like this? I'm beginning to wonder. Jamie, we've got to help the poor little mite. I don't know how, but we can't just... You're not going outside. I don't fancy it, but we've got no choice. Look, if you'll take the poker, I've got my staff. And what are we going to do? Have you seen them? Do you know exactly where they are? Can you see anything, Pam? They're not on the road. Not at this side, anyway. Are you sure? Well, there's nothing moving. But they could be in the shadows. I suppose so, yes. They'll move if we go out to them. They'll do that, all right. Look, maybe maybe a quick dash will do it. I'll go first. You cover the rear, Father. Pam, you bolt the door behind us. I can't do that. Look, you've got to in case we haven't got time to get back. Use your loaf. We can't leave you here behind an unlocked door. No, and we're not going to. No. No. Come on now, Father. Don't get in the way. I'm not moving, Jamie. Well, get out of the way, Father, please. I mean it. Oh, this is stupid! Yes, it is! Why? I mean, why? Because the more I hear that noise, the less I believe that there is a child out there. How can you say that? It's too pet. Altogether too well-timed. Look, I know what you're getting at, but it's a hell of a risk. I mean, it's hardly a thing we dare make a mistake about. Suppose we're wrong. Have we the right to gamble? No, we haven't. It's Not ridiculous. Not we, Jamie. Me. It's my decision. I'm not going to let you go out there. Somebody's got to. So you can rest your conscience on that. That would be despicable. It's got to be a joint decision or nothing. You're both crazy. What's the matter with you? You've heard him crying. Shut up, Pam. Help me. Please, mister, help me. Listen to him. Just listen. I won't shut up. They mustn't be allowed to win, these people. Not in any way. Don't you see, Mrs. Hewitt, the most vicious weapon of evil is its ability to insinuate itself where there was once confidence and trust. Even love can be undermined. She was only feeling for the child. I know, much credit to her. It sounds so real. If only I could be sure. Well, that at least we can be sure of. Try and get her to rest, Jamie. It's still a long time until daylight. 
Another cup, anyone? Uh, not for me, thanks. I think I'd better just have a look out of the window. They're pretty quiet. Let's hope they stay that way. Obliging of them to let us have the tea in peace. Maybe this is plan three. Keep us guessing, waiting for the noise to begin again. Oh, there may be something in that. The silence is a bit deafening. I keep waiting for it to explode. I can't see anything this side. Nor this. Is it my imagination or is it a bit lighter? Can't see much difference here. <laughs> no. Savage! 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 Get her behind you. Cover her and stay like that. Is that clear? And what do you... Don't argue. Do it. You ready? Yeah! yeah! Oh, no, no! He'll never hold it. Not with that little chap. God, he's down! Oh, and he's grappling with it. Father! It's, it's all right. It's all right now. It's over. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Strange how ludicrous and unfrightening that sounds now. I'm scared to death. We're going to win, Jamie. We're going to beat them. Let's tell them just that. Can you hear me? Are you out there? You've lost! You've lost! We're going to beat you yet! Stop it! Savage! 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 Drop! Savage! Savage! Not very practical, but I feel better. Hey, it is getting lighter, you know. Oh, God, can we have the house lights on now, do you think? Yes, let's have them on. Let's have them all on. They'll have to scarp us soon now. It's nearly morning. Well, how about that, Father? I suppose they disappear in a puff of smoke at the first ray of daylight. Uh, switch them on, Pam. Oh, it's good to get out of that darkness. God, look at the size of that dog. How the hell did he get in? Hey, Father, just a small point, but well, whose blood is that trickling down your fingers? Oh, God, he's hurt. I rather suspect it's mine. Hey, get some hot water, Pam. Well, why didn't you tell us? I mean, why let me go waffling on, shouting defiance through the windows like a great twit? Oh, do you know, I wasn't absolutely sure there were so many sensations. Here, let's have a look. Come on, roll up these damn great sleeves. Ooh. Oh, oh. Father, we'll have to tie something round that. Uh, the sleeves were a great help, really. They took a lot of the impact from the teeth. <laughs> it's funny, but the arm didn't seem to matter at the time. You think only of the face. So you strangled him? Well, let's say I couldn't think of more subtle reactions. God, he's a big brew. It's a good job you are, too. <coughs> well, don't ever turn lawless, do you hear? I wouldn't fancy those great mitts of yours round my throat. It's not the same dog that Harris got, incidentally. It's a different colour. And they must have some others, too. Well, one other, at least. Here. Yeah. Here, yeah, does that feel too tight? Uh, yes, it does a bit. Oh, then it'll do. Here, now, you come on into the kitchen. That water should be ready. So you tell me, Sergeant. With two bolts on the door and the window secured, how did it get in? You sure they were secure? Ah, oh, leave off, Sarge. We were expecting trouble, remember? I fastened them myself. So now what? A phantom canine strikes. Well, you tell me how it got in. Well, not through the keyhole, Jamie. Oh, very funny. I know it was real enough, so does Father Probert. You should see his arm. But the fact remains, there we were behind locked doors, and yet all of a sudden there was this dog. It's put years on me, I can tell you. Uh, look, do me a favour, get some sleep. We're all going to have a very busy night. I'm all right. Oh, sure. How much sleep have you had in the last two nights? Enough. For the normal type of emergencies we're used to, maybe it would be enough. But this isn't normal, is it? You've had your nerves strung up tight until you don't know what's what. Look, go and join that wife of yours. There's nothing you can do till tonight anyway. Then there'll be plenty. How can you settle when you don't understand things? It's like an appetite. Is it? Well, they tell us those are things we've got to keep under control. You ask your friar friend, you know, the uh, dog strangler. It's marvellous what they got in reserve, some of these men of peace. You're in a right mood this afternoon, aren't you? 
You're as keyed up as I am. You old faker. Bumpf. It's nerves. That's why you're so bitchy. All right, ten out of ten for observation. Well, 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 why didn't you say so? You don't have to pretend with me. Uh, don't get cocky. Well, what is it, then? Ah, it's just a waiting, I think. Be all right when we get moving. Isn't it going right, is that it? Oh, the machinery is moving. You know, the machine, it's cumbersome, but eventually it grinds exceeding small. We'll turn them all over with a bit of luck. God, I hope so. Me too. Because there's obviously some ripe fruits in this lot. What they intend doing to the old lady and what they did to Harris, tried to do to you. We can forget Harris. We shall never prove that one. That's just it. How much else are we going to have to forget because we can't prove it? There's too many holes at the moment, too many gaps. Even a bad lawyer could make us look silly. But surely, if we take them tonight, right in the middle of what they intend to do to Mrs. Leslie... Oh, that'll help a lot, naturally. Mainly, it'll help Mrs. Leslie. Ah, uh, maybe it's me being greedy. I don't like to think of any of this lot ever being in circulation again, that's all. Now stop nattering and get some sleep. I've got to get into division. What for? The conference. There's going to be after a blasted force out tonight. All on tiptoe as well. Superintendent speaking. Yes? Oh, hello, Doc. What have you got? I see. At least two, is it? All right, well, don't worry about that. By tomorrow, you should have all the bits you need. No, definitely not before then. We can't go tramping around there till it's finished. That's why we only sent you those few bits and pieces. Ah, all right, it doesn't matter. Not yet, anyway. Doc... Doc, I don't care what sex they were, not yet. Today it doesn't matter. To be quite honest, you've given us all we needed from you at this stage. When you gave us a definite identification as human, that's all we needed to start things moving. Uh, come tomorrow, though, I shall want to know the lot. Sex, age, height, weight, you know. And uh, if you can get the names and addresses as well, we shall be obliged. <laughs> ah, of course you will. You'll have lots more bits, a lorry load, maybe. We'll do the job properly, then. All right. All right, right. So long, Doc. Oh, he's a good man, that, but a bit formal. But a lot's going to depend on what he can tell us, I'm afraid. There's a shortage of evidence, Sergeant. <laughs> you see, if I say it like that, it sounds like your fault. Can we get round it, sir? Well, we'd better. Anyway, one thing at a time. Let's get tonight's little programme sorted out first. Here's a question for you, Sergeant, and think about it. Don't just waffle me an answer because I'm the superintendent. About tonight... Are they going to be there? Well, looking at it from their angle, there's every reason why they should be. By their calendar, it's a big night. They've got a body on ice, which they can't keep indefinitely. And tonight's suitable for a sacrifice. Well, more than just suitable, according to Father Probert. He was telling me yesterday how he believed that tonight they'd try to raise the devil. I mean, literally that. Every reason then, sir, why they'll be there tonight. Aye, every reason but one. What's that then, sir? A nosy PC and a nosy priest. And yet they've gone out of their way to antagonise those two. Look at last night's performance. Practically inviting attention to themselves. Now, why? It's either very cheeky, very cocky indeed, or it's very careless. And I don't believe they'll be careless. It worries me, it just doesn't fit. It could be cockiness, sir. As long as I don't see any extra police activity, they... I mean, they know that Father Probert and PCU are interested in them, but they must know also how little in the way of evidence they've got. Oh, well, they're right there. Well, the big thing is, sir, they... They don't know we've learned about the woman they intend to kill. And you think they're satisfied that so far suspicion's gone no further than the PC and the priest? It must be that, sir. And providing we're quiet enough tonight, we stand a chance of taking them. Oh, we'll be quiet enough. And I hope you're right. And supposing you are and we do take them, what then? What have we got that we can hammer them with? Come in here a minute, will you, Chief Inspector? We'll ask the expert. I've had him on it all day. I hope he's found more than I can see. Oh, I doubt it. The trained legal mind is a bit of a Mary Ellen when it comes to chance in its arm. Come on in. Oh, good morning, sir. I... Oh, uh, I've been checking our position. Oh, it's all right, Chief. You know the sergeant here. It's all happening on his patch <clears throat> so you can lift the security. Oh. Sit down. Thanks. Now, mm. oh, what have you got? Well, sir, <clears throat> that depends on what assumptions you wish me to make. If you don't wish me to make any, then I can foresee things like uh, 
cemeteries damage in, disorderly conduct in, death, false statements, dead bodies disinterment of, uh, at the very best, abduction. Abduction? Back it in, Chief. I want something a damn sight more lethal than that. I don't want these articles loose around here any more after this. Uh, the rest is pure speculation, sir. Go on, man, speculate. Well, assuming a successful conclusion to tonight's affair, and I would recommend rescuing the intended victim at the last practical moment, by then, the ritual pattern should be pointing clearly towards sacrifice, and the criminal intent ought to be provable. In that event, a prosecution for conspiracy to murder becomes a distinct possibility. It's a misdemeanor. Yeah. Good God, can't we find a felony? What about attempted murder? Oh, I'd question whether a court would construe the ritual pattern itself as amounting to an actual attempt to murder, since that offence usually requires some physical violence to have been offered in furtherance of the attempt. <laughs> we can hardly afford to wait until that happens in this case, although it would unquestionably strengthen our position. In fact, if we let them kill the old girl, we're laughing. <laughs> Well, there's something of a conflict of interest between Mrs. Leslie and ourselves on that point. Come on, Chief Inspector, push it a bit further. There's got to be more. Only if the pathologist can help. If we can provide him with remains from the site and he can testify to deaths that were not natural. But, but even then, without the corroboration of some strong testimony, uh, ideally by confessions from some of the group involved, well, I shouldn't care to be prosecuting counsel. So, if they know enough to keep their mouths shut, we're in trouble. Mm, yeah. I'm afraid that's about accurate. They'll not talk, sir. For a start, they'll be too scared. They know best of all what happens to those who do, and people like this uh, Belias bloke, well, they'll be too fly. Aye, oh, that one. He's a genuine registered MD, incidentally. That much is legal. Mm. I'm having inquiries circulated. I don't expect he'll have any form, but you can never tell. <sighs> oh, come on. Don't get depressed, Sergeant. There'll be something. The chief inspector here is professionally committed to looking on the black side. Mm -hmm. We can't have girlish false optimism from the legal department. <laughs> One pales at the thought. Ah, we'll turn them over, Sergeant. One way or another, we'll root them out. Well, we say, just transplanted or really torn out by the roots. I intend to make it the latter. Yes, sir. Right. So do I. Then let's get the ball rolling, shall we? I want subdivisional inspectors, road traffic inspector in my office now. Oh, and there's a wireless bod from County in the building somewhere. Find him as well. Now. And then get on to both neighbouring divisions and find out from the superintendents how many men I can expect. Come in, Father. Glad you could manage it. How's that arm? Oh, I wouldn't miss tonight, Superintendent. The arm will heal, thank you. Good. Well, come and sit with the sergeant here. Keep him down. He keeps wanting something to do. Hello, Father. I must admit I'm fed up with this waiting. Well, I know just how you feel, Sergeant. I've been watching the clock, too. Well, you can both just sit there and watch me stick these little flags in the map. You see, I have got something to do. Privilege of rank, you know. It's not energetic, but uh, it does make you feel a bit like Napoleon. Who was that? Spider 3, sir. Reporting Spider 5 now nearly reached the summit. Oh, aye. Somebody else fed up with nothing to do. Making unnecessary reports. Spider 5 at the moment, Father. is climbing Black Tor with a damn great set on his back. He'll be able to look right down on them. They'll not expect anybody up there. I shouldn't think they would. It's sheer rock face from above that altar site. Aye, oh, he volunteered. It's his hobby. Some idiot from the next division. You know, they get younger, these bobbies. I'm sure I was never as young as that, even at school. We've not sent him up before now, in case he freezes to death. We've got the rest of the area cordoned, as you can see from the map. Now you seem fairly thick on the ground. It's as big a turnout as I can remember. Whatever goes out or comes in, we shall know. Uh, that is, if they use the roads. I'm assuming that broomsticks are out. You can't get the bristles, you know. <laughs> Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Five calling. You turn it up a bit, son. Sir? Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider five calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider 5. Receiving you strength 4. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. I'm in position. I'm in position. Excellent view. I say again, excellent view. Over. Just listen at it. He thinks he's up there for the scenery. Time to keep his head down. Hello, Spider 5. Your message received and understood. Now maintain maximum concealment. I say again, maximum concealment. Over and out. Hello, Webb. We'll go out. He's done well making that climb. Oh, well, if he gets down in one piece, he'll no doubt pick up a commendation. Well, that's the last flag. The web's complete. All we've got to do now is wait for the dark. 
and for the things that emerge with the dark. Get that cadet to get some tea in here. Have another one, Father. I'm smoking far too many, but I will. I shall regret this indiscipline come next Lent. Is uh, Jamie going to miss the party then? No, no, he stays in the house just long enough to make things seem ordinary, that's all. Pretends to go to bed, you know, that sort of thing. We'll uh, pick him up when we begin to close in. And Mrs Hewitt? My missus should have her tucked up in bed by now. Hello, Webb. Spider One calling. Aye, aye. This could be it. Let's all hear it, son. It's up. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider One calling. Spider One calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider One. Hello, Spider One. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. Suspect has just left his premises in grey, unlettered van, believed Thames trader, registered number, Banjo X-Ray Fox 132, I say again, Banjo X-Ray Fox 132, heading north, message ends, over. That's the undertaker, heading north, that'll be here, this road, straight for the traveller's rest, tell him okay, maintain position. Hello. That grey van will be for Mrs. Leslie. It looks like the game's Hold on. Out. We've started. Hello, Web. Hello, Web. Spider 4 calling. Message for you, over. Hello, Spider 4. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Web. Message begins. Grover Saloon Car. Believe five occupants just entered Traveller's Rest Yard. Message ends. Over. That makes four vehicles in there now, including the Undertaker's plane van. Ask him if he can see what they're doing. Hello, Spider 4. Your message received and understood. Have you observed actions of occupants of these vehicles? Over. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Van driver observed to enter premises, not yet returned. Occupants of other vehicles are still in their cars. They're just sitting there. Over. OK, tell him to maintain observations. Hello, hmm. Spider 4. No doubt about it now. Maintain this is it. They're Over waiting for Belias. I shall feel a lot better when he's safely under our noses. Have you uh, got someone near the home, Superintendent? Yes, Spider 2. From where he is, you can see the drive. He'll know when Belias leaves. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Hello, Spider this could be it now. Calling. Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. Spider 5 calling. Spider 5 calling. Message for you. Over. What the hell's he want? They can't be at the door yet. He sounds frozen. Hello, Spider 5. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. Nothing to report on Black Tor. Over. Oh, get him off the air. Poor oh, lad, Hello, you're Spider not going to keep him up there till Maintain daylight, are you? It's a summer night, remember? Over night of the summer out. festival. Uh, not at that height. No wonder he felt he had to call. He must think the world's empty. Ah, we'll get him some lights up and help him down as soon as we can. He'll be all right. Think of the stars. Then there'll be a moon later. He's got enormous guts climbing up there. Hello, Web. Hello, Web. Spider 2 Hello. calling. Oh, that's it. Oh, oh, come on. Spider 2 calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, Spider 2. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Webb. Message begins. Bentley Saloon Car. Registration number not known. Left the old people's home at 22.45 hours. Proceeded north on B6149. Message ends. Over. Oh, that's five minutes ago. I bet he was trying to call us when young Mountain Goat was on the air. If it is Belias, and who else in a Bentley? They'll be nearly at the travellers by now. Tell him to resume watch. Hello. Do we begin Spider moving in now, Superintendent? No. Not until that over car turns into out. the travellers, and then only to the second positions. I want them all on the tour, nicely preoccupied before we really close in. Hello, Web. Hello, Web. Spider 4 calling. Message for you, over. Hello, Spider 4. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Web. Message begins. Bentley Saloon Car. Registration number not known. Just entered the travellers' rest yard. Message ends. Over. Okay, son. Give them all the word to move to the second stations. I shall be in the car if you want me. Sir. Come on, Father. Hey. Sergeant, let's get on the way. Hello, all stations. Hello, all stations. Web calling. It's a genuine democratic touch. I hope you're suitably impressed, Father. Superintendents didn't give lifts to PCs in my day. I confess I suspect your motive. I could have followed on the bike, sir. You didn't have Constable, to... Constable, I didn't pick you up so you could natter all the way. You just sit quietly in the back and concentrate. I believe you're a cynic, Father. You think I've done it for some mundane reason. Like I might be needing his local knowledge. The idea did flitter across. <laughs> Hello, Webb. Hello, Webb. 
Spider 5 calling. Spider 5 calling. Message for you. Over. Hello, young head in the cloud. Sounds like he's onto something. Hello, Spider 5. Pass your message. Over. Hello, Web. They're here. Uh, message begins. They're here. They're below me now. They've left the cars. I can see them. In robes. They're lighting torches. A queer colour. A dark flame. Uh, over. Message, message ends. Hello, Webb. Superintendent here. I heard all that. No need to relay. Out. Some message. What's he on about dark flames? They use a kind of pitch to give a dark flame. It's blue, really. Which is as black as they can get it. Black being their liturgical colour. Oh, you live and learn. I thought he was going potty. Put your foot down, driver. We will. He's waiting till that fire of theirs gets good and bright. With the light in their eyes, they're not going to notice us. Meantime, keep your head down. They're beginning to circle the fire. They look like the Ku Klux Klan. They're certainly no more appetizing. They don't all dress alike, then. No, no. They have their ranks and hierarchies. There's one there without an order at all. Look. It's a woman. Hey, up. There's a signal. Come on, let's go. Now watch me and stop when I stop. Relax. We can see from here. No point in going any nearer till they produce Mrs. Leslie. I can't see any signs of her, can you? Not yet. What a mob. You wouldn't dream, would you, not in this day and age? I mean, what a way to get your kit distorted, isn't it? Didn't their movements seem violent? Yeah. Hey, look, there's that one without the hood again. Gosh, she only looks a bit of a lass. How did they... What the hell are you doing? Get down! Jimmy, what's the matter? Get down, let get down! Let me go! Let go of me! What's the matter with him? Oh, Lord! Look! Look who it is! It's Pam! It's Pam! That was episode 5 of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. <laughs>